Amen. Amen. Well, on behalf of the Chief Electoral Commissioner and the Electoral Commission, I wish to welcome all of you, our esteemed stakeholders, to this political party's election for the two of I see representatives of political parties. I see representatives from the democratic institutions. I see you, I've seen a lot of people from the media, I, I see civil society, all of you are welcome. Now we consider all of you as primary stakeholders, that is why every fortnight we call you to have this dialogue to update you on the, what is happening in the electoral process. Commissioner Edward Alpha usually chairs this meeting, but he uh, is absent, he is out of the country. He is in South Africa attending the conference on uh, the African, uh, not the African, the AOM, Association of World Electoral uh, Management Bodies. It's the largest group of election bodies. And uh, I just say that uh, in that meeting, Sarah Leo has been elected as a member of the board. Of the world, uh, the association of the world electoral bodies. Can we give that a hand? This is an indication that uh, our efforts are being recognized globally. The PPRT chairman is also part of that delegation. Now, if we look at the agenda, we have a uh, Adoption of the agenda, one is the document, updates from the total registration process, updates from the electoral system, interactions, AOB, and the uh, adjournments. So, can someone move for the adoption of this agenda? Yeah, I want the most considering from Ariel. Any second? Thank you. So, introductions. I don't know if you have time to introduce, but uh, let me take the opportunity to introduce the commissioners here. Now, if we have uh, on this side, we have Commissioner Ronald Kumu Masiri, who is the commissioner for the West Nigeria. We have a Commissioner Miriam Sia, the Vice Lady of the West. Then, of course, we have the Chief Electoral Commissioner, the Chairman, the National Economic Officer, and also Commissioner of the In case you 
My name is Chris Kuka, the chairman of the New Democratic Party. The most of the New Democratic Party. Happy to serve my family. As I Good morning, Monsieur Bangura, National Secretary General of the Unity Party. Saido Abbas Dumbuya, National Deputy Organizing Secretary, NGC. Saido Kako, Acting National Organizing Secretary, PDP Sobe, and Council Member APA. Ibrahim Kubasa, National Unity and Reconciliation Party. Augustine Jimmy Tommy, National Auditor. Ibrahim Faya Sawane, Legal Advice, SLP. Sapala, SLP. Patrick Michael Sidney, National Deputy Young Generation Leader, SLP. National Young Generation Leaders and People's Party. And the job state, National Women's Leader, CDP, and APWA. Okay, you see our shoes. We have some uh, special organizations. I move to so there are the Amazon Foundation for Peace. The first time, Masakwe Amazon Foundation. Mohamed Ibrahim Kone, uh, National Democratic Institute for International Affairs. Thank you. Okay. Reverend James Bahai, you. What are you doing? 
Franklin Ibrahim Suare, Head of Election Security Management, Yellow Police, Assistant Commissioner of Police. Okay, okay. <laughs> thank you all, thank you all for the introduction. Usually, usually they don't ask members of the Senate to introduce themselves. So we will move on to item number five which is the update on the voter registration process. You will recall that um, after the end of the free data capture, the commission released a press statement on the process. And some of the issues captured in that press statement include the extraction of data from the laptops, the retrieval of kits, Uploading of district data into national server, data cleansing, duplication, and duplication. Uh, but uh, at this moment, I will invite the technical people, the director of operations and the director of uh, data management, to brief all of us on the to give us an update on the process so far. Director Swami. Okay, director of operations first. We have Mr. Mohamed Touré, who is our director of operations. Thank you very much, Michelle. Good morning, all. Uh, as you are all aware, the voter registration exercise, which commenced on the 3rd of September, was concluded on the 8th of October. And that process generally went on to successfully we at the electoral commission we were very pleased with this outcome and we uh, want to thank all stakeholders who, who contributed um, in various ways in ensuring the success of the uh, exercise itself but now at the end of the exercise the commission as mentioned just now put out a press release in which we have indicated that uh, the various stages following the registration, which basically includes data consolidation, um, deduplication, and adjudication. That process is largely in the hands of the Department of Data Management, um, which will give us an update as to the status of the data consolidation, as well as the processes involved in the duplication. Of course, after this exercise, we um, also continue with the registration process, which will uh, uh, go on to exhibition. But for now, we stick with the consolidation and the deduction process, for which I will invite the director of data management, Mr. Swari, to give us an update um, in that regard. Mr. Swari, please. Thank you, Director of Operation. Uh, I'll be brief in my statement of analysis. As you rightly mentioned, data capture and data processing are two separate activities. And in order to have the data that you can speak to at all time, you have to make sure that the necessary processes and protocols are all observed before you come up with the figure. We have retrieved all the 1,850 laptops that are sent for the field data capture. They are now at our data center. We have similarly extracted data from all of them and currently being uploaded onto our business server. The registration captured two different set of voters, new is those who have not been registered by the civil registry and the second had to do with those that have been captured already by the civil registry so in total we are talking about two sets of data that we are currently processing at our data center uh, up to this afternoon 
the Electoral Commission of Sierra Leone Data Center has processed this one, sorry, one million five six hundred and forty thousand nine hundred and ninety eight. One million six hundred and forty two thousand nine hundred and ninety eight as old voters. That's a confirmed case. Those that went through the, the laptop. Similarly, for those that went through the MCI system, we have a total of 260,537. For the new registration, out of this total, 260,537, we realize after data consolidation and transmission that 85,000 of them are clear case, meaning they have only single existence in the identity management system at the National Single Registration Authority. Similarly, 175,537 are in conflict, meaning there is more than one existence of such records. This process, I mean, this figure, they require a civil registry to have what we call adjudication on that particular data set. Again, we have uploaded a total of 1,592,308, but yet to be processed. In total, what we have processed and what is spending is about three million four hundred and eighty five thousand hundred and forty three. Three million four hundred and ninety five thousand eight hundred and forty three. That is after uploading what you have and what has been uploaded, when we combine the two. It's about three million four hundred and ninety-five thousand eight hundred and forty-three. Let me just say this: it's not a final figure for any for the just computer boot and decision exercise. We have to do adjudication and deduplication. Adjudication is a process where, when someone, I mean, particular voter appears in more than one center, and then that record is flagged, and if you are just gave you the one hundred and seventy-five. We are going to look at those two records and then we'll end up choosing just one. There are some cases, they are not actual duplicates. It's like they have similarity in their fingerprint. So in, in such cases, the two individuals are separated as separate records. But wherein that same record is tied to a single voter, it means we have to delete one and then we keep one. So the figure might be like a plus or minus at the end of the day. We are yet to receive upload data from one district, which is a Bond Island, Bond sorry, Bond district. So with that, when we upload that, I'm sure by Friday next week, we have our final figure respect to those that actually took part in the voter registration exercise. We, I think uh, they have some constraint up to now, but I'm sure by end of the day, we have the hard drive from Bond Island. So that will also add up to the last figure I just gave, the 3.4 million. In short, this is what we have for the data center. I'm sure by next week we will have a clear picture of what transpired during the intervention exercise. Thank you all. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Swari. Now, uh, Mr. Swari did mention that the Commission for the Undertaking um, Education Exercise uh, uh, and Deduplication. Um, in the spirit of transparency, the Commission will commence this exercise at the National Warehouse on Monday. And in that regard, the Commission is in, uh, inviting uh, stakeholders, political parties, to be present. But of course, this is uh, an electoral process. And as all the electoral processes where stakeholders, political parties, and observers are invited. 
there are procedures. So we are requesting that one political party is represented at the identification process, and that, that individual is going, to, is going to be accredited by the external relations department. So uh, political parties that are interested can please contact the Electoral Education Department for uh, uh, external relations external relations department for accreditation. So the process is going to commence on Monday. We want you to witness how we do the accreditation, what are the processes and, uh, and control mechanisms put the place. So that's just an update I hope you want to add. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Tune, Director of Operations, and uh, Mr. Henry Suare, Director of uh, Data Management. So the, the process will take place at the data center at the uh, National Warehouse. Within the and uh, Mr. Tuwe has said that the uh, political parties can send in one representative, one person per party. So that person needs to be accredited. The media and also members of the civil society can also request for accreditation. But uh, you will understand that uh, the data center is a small space. So we cannot accommodate several media organizations at the same time. But I'm sure the director of external relations, Mr. Albert Masako, who will be facilitating this accreditation process, will ensure that uh, at any time, members of the media who want to observe the process will be able to do so. So we will come to interactions. But first, we will go with the agenda. So we move to item number six. Item number six is updates on the electoral system. What is an electoral system? An electoral system is the way votes cast in an elections are converted to seats. In this country, in Sierra Leone, we have used several systems. For example, for presidential elections, we use the two-round system because it says that uh, if you don't have 55 percent in the first round, you go to the second round, which is the runoff. We have used several versions of the PR system. We have used the first past the post system. So at this juncture, I will invite no less a person than the chief electoral commissioner. The chairman and national economy officer to make a statement to give us an update on the electoral system. Chairman Conesa. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Baka, thank you, Felix and gentlemen. Uh, I earlier asked what level are we now? And everybody said we are at level one. Are we still level one? Yes. Good, good, good. So let's let's move. Maybe we'll go to level. We'll remain at level one. I know. Since my tweet yesterday, several comments. Uh, I think at the moment, if I was contesting for popularity, I would be I would be number one. So let me go to the press statement. In accordance with Section 38A of the Constitution of Sierra Leone, 1991, Act Number no. Six of 1991, as amended in 2001, referencing Subsection Three of Section 38 of the Pre of Section 38, the President may after consultation with the electoral commission director such election shall be conducted on the basis of the existing district in a manner to be known as district block representation instead of constituencies. 
On 19th October 2022, the Commission held a consultative meeting with His Excellency President Julius Madabio to update him on progress relating to the boundary delimitation exercise being undertaken by the Electoral Commission for Sierra Leone. Subsequently, on the 20th October 2022, the Commission received a correspondence, correspondence from His Excellency, the President, in which the ECSR was directed to use the district block and proportional representation PR system for the conduct of the June 24, 2023 multi tier elections. Within this context, the Commission hereby informed the public and key stakeholders that the 2023 multi tier elections will be conducted using the PR system and that the boundary delimitation exercise, which had commenced is halted with immediate effect. This is to facilitate effective planning on matters relating to procedures, rules, and regulations on the proportional representation system. The Commission remains committed and compliant with legal mandates and guiding principles, and we keep the public and key stakeholders fully informed and engage on this train. Thank you. End of press statement. 21st October 2022. Thank you very much, CEC and uh, Chairman. Let me go further. Let me go further to read out the directive. At the meeting with His Excellency, the President, including others, and on the 19th of October 2022, you, that is the Commission, provided an update on the impracticality of delimiting the constituency in time for the 24 June 2023 general elections of ordinary members of Parliament. Advise that as a consequence of one above, the 24th June 2023 general election was impracticable to hold using constituencies. And advise that on the basis of one and two above, the 24th June 2023 elections of other members of parliament be conducted on the basis of the secondary electoral system namely the district block proportional representation system. As a consequence of the above, His Excellency the President, by the powers vested in him by Section 38A of the Constitution of Sierra Leone, Act 20, 2001, has directed that the 24th June general elections of members of parliament be conducted using the district proportional representation, you are kindly advised to give effect to this presidential directive. Sign, Secretary to President. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman. I understand that uh, this meeting is live on Facebook. It's being streamed live. Now, uh, we have listened to the voter registration update. And now we have listened to a press statement from the electoral commission for Sierra Leone and a letter from the State House directing the commission to use the district block proportional representation system for the June 24 general election. Let me say that uh, there will be fine details 
I'm sure some of you will want to ask a lot of questions or the fine details we talk later on. Don't expect all the answers today. Nevertheless, we will open the floor for interactions. And uh, obviously, we hope that uh, we will still be at level one, even during the interactions. The floor is open. Today is Friday, so we hope that uh, we will conclude this meeting as soon as possible. Yes, James Lahai. Reverend James Lahai of you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman, and I want, on behalf of National Election Watch, to thank the Commission for their efforts so far. Some observations that we have as National Election Board include during the data capture of the field. We observe, especially in the second phase, that several first time voters, and even some who were not first time voters, we are denied registration and we are not given rejection forms. And by not being given, especially in the Western area, and by not giving these potential voters a rejection form, terminates any claim they may want to make during exhibition for their names to be included on the register. I don't know if the Commission has anything in mind for this category of people who we are sent to go to the NCRA. And the NCRA at this PPLC meeting indicated that there is nowhere in the law that indicates that registration staff should send registrants to NCRA for any form of registration document. I appreciate that the fine details will be supplied later in the first of the district block system. I may want to bring to your attention some concerns whilst you'll be working on the fine details for the district block system. So that clarity is thrown on which data is going to determine allocation of seat to the district. Will it be the midterm census or the total number of registered voters by district? We are concerned about this because of the implications it might have in creating an uneven playing field noting that the midterm census result is in controversy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Reverend. Um, I will attempt to answer the first question. And the uh, CEC and Chairman will respond to the issue of uh, which data to use on the allocation of seats. Now, you said um, during the registration exercise, some first-time voters were rejected, and you were not given rejection forms. Now, there are the procedure. The procedure is that uh, when you go for registration as a first-time voter, you have to satisfy the registration officer. Now, there are situations where some of the first time voters we are not necessarily rejected. They were simply asked to bring documentary or non documentary proof. So, in such a situation, you don't need a rejection form because you expect the applicant to come back with the 
documentary proof, maybe the birth certificate or somebody, a local chief, a pastor or imam to complete the witness form. So in those cases, we don't issue a rejection form because all the registration officer is asking you to do is to try to convince you. The, reject, the, the registration officer issues the rejection form where he is absolutely certain that you do not meet the requirements for you to be registered. That is when he now issues you the registration form, I mean the rejection form. And in that form, we will identify the reason why we are rejecting. For some of them, it's just a matter of asking them to give the proof. So in that case, we don't give the rejection form. Because if they give you a rejection form and you appear in another center, you will be committing a crime. So all you need to do, go home, get your birth certificate, or get a document, or meet somebody who knows you in the area as prescribed in the law. Once that person comes to complete the business form, if the apple is satisfied, you will be registered. So on the second part of on the second question, I will kindly ask the chairman to respond. He is asking for which data will the commission use on the allocation of, of, of seats. Thank you. It's just proven that where I have three or four titles, the box stop here. Um, we are at this point uh, in discussion as a commission to clearly identify which data. But if you refer to the provision under section 38A, it says the district, the number of seats can be determined and approved by parliament. So who determine that is something we are looking at it very keenly. And we are going to have consultative meetings with parliament to political parties. However, for the purposes of the boundary delimitation, which we started, and the reason we started was because the existing boundary limit, boundaries of constituencies expired on February uh, 2022. And with the emergence, with the provision of the statistic data, we have already planned, we have already used that census data to determine the number of seats. So if we are good, we are going to carry out the boundary delimitation, surely we are going to use the the midterm census for us. It is, since we are now using the district block system, which has different indication under the provision of section 38A, then we need to have a discussion with political parties, with the civil society organization, and other stakeholders to determine the number of allocated seats to this case. Because the last time the system was used, we had a peer spread of representatives of constituency across the country by this way. So we are reviewing the process. We, are, we will come back to the public and inform them after having consultative meetings with all stakeholders, including political parties. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. So the reason why I, I answered your question is to, to prevent people asking the same, the same questions. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, um, Commissioners. Thank you, CEC. And thank you for the update on the voters registration exercise. Um, listening to the data management director, you did say that you have retrieved all. 1,580 something machines that uh, were in the field for the registration. But then again, you did say that uh, you have not received anything from BOM. So my question is, what exactly have you not received from BOM, the machines or the hard drive? Uh, we just need clarity on that. And if you haven't received anything from Bond, does that mean the 3,495,843 processed and unprocessed data that you have currently does not include 
data from all districts. You need to know that. Uh, I just wanted to say something also on the system. Clearly, I don't want to go into the legality because as a political party, we will have to, you know, process it and probably come with a, a position as to our next steps. But just from, for clarity's sake, CEC, you did say 2023 we have a multi-tier electoral process. So the PR system, you know, I mean, boundary delimitation doesn't end with just constituencies. We have council, we have wards. So just looking at that, you know, are you saying you know, this system you want us to adopt is going to cover all of that. Okay, let me respond to that and then the operation of that's how we come. Uh, recall the Constitution Order Section 33 provides the authority for the for the Electoral Commission to develop regulations for the conduct of elections and including the, the, the local council elections. So if we had decided, if the directive are given to us to use the general election parliamentary, then the commission is also reviewed. And by all implications, we have to be upfront with this. We cannot have one proportional representation for general election or parliamentary election, and they have a ward election by, by ward. So whatever elections we are conducting, and remember also again, under the, the 2022 Public Elections Act, there's a clear provision which says that all elections, all public elections could be conducted under the, the Public Elections Act. So which means we have to come out with the same regulations in terms of the parliamentary as well as the, the local council. Yes, on the question of uh, data, uh, not just collected from bomb, we have received data from the first phase. Uh, because after the first phase of registration, you recall we brought all uh, external hard drives to data center and uploaded uh, data from those districts. What we have we received from bomb. Uh, currently relate to the, the archive for the second and two day phase as well as the laptops. The problem we had was that the drop that was sent to retrieve materials had a breakdown and it subsequently left bomb is now um, on its way to freedom. So by the end of today that's those materials will definitely be here at, at, the, at the warehouse. So that's the reason why I bond uh, um, for left behind. Uh, and of course, we know the challenge of bringing the point uh, materials from the most difficult uh, quarry places in the world. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I now understand the reason why we have armed guards outside our door. I was surprised they were not even going to allow us entry because I see you are actually expecting level three. Now, in the case of the legislation, I want to start there. And the same goes, liquid find the level. So as we proceed, the level will be elevated. Firstly, with the number of people that were ejected, I am sort of peeved about the explanation we just received that they were told to go back and get documentation after they had clearly said they don't have. And I was witness to them being interviewed in such a manner 
You don't get this, no. You don't get that, no. Give them a rejection slip. They refuse. And in the center where I was, where you actually called armed people to come, and I, I don't know if it was to ask me or what, that were there. Yes. And where this must have come from, this office, the whole truckload of police from this country, alone, could have come from a direct. But in that center, 70 people on my insistence were given rejection slips. I'm speaking to the container. Were given rejection slips. And on those rejection slips, the boxes that were checked were cannot be convinced you are a Sierra And there I sat, and no registrant was interviewed to assess their Sierra So as you move forward to verification, I am very concerned that when those people present those rejection slips, and he's saying here quite simply, quite convincingly that you can come with a chief or you can come with an imam. Imams and chiefs were rejected. They were not allowed to verify people. In my presence, and sir, I have a lot of video if you need that. Is not true. A lot were rejected. <laughs> so let us leave that. I said we will find their letter. Secondly, I want to go to your pronouncement of the district law system. Now, as much as I acknowledge I am no lawyer, but having a little familiarization with the Constitution, and your statement you said, in consultation with you, that means when you meet with the president, he is soliciting your counsel, your advice as to which way is the best way for Sierra Leone to go. And with my limited legal knowledge, does the Constitution not supersede any other document? And does it not say that the expiration of, of constituencies happens seven years after the last boundaries were done? I'm asking. And then um, constituencies become invalid is the question. And thirdly, does this not say if the conditionalities are met in order for us to then go to PR? And as you give the president's counsel and you look at the time frame involved, are you giving the president the best possible advice? in that the public that own the election have to be educated on a whole new way of voting? Do you think that at this time, when the clock is ticking to election, that a district block system is the best for Sahelio? It is a question. I will wait patiently. Yes, okay. Thank you very much. Please let me address this. Uh, I don't know if more questions, but I trust my, my team. They will respond to all of the issues uh, that will come before I have another meeting. You know, I have to go to attend. Um, Madam. You might want to know, out of the data we have processed, we have over 4,000 people that will issue out the rejection form. Over 4,000 across the country. Of course, Western here has the, the largest. So we are going to process that, and as we have started, it's going to be transparent. If we are going to reject you, the evidence will be there. If we are going to include you, you will have the evidence that will convince us so we issue out over 4,000 uh, rejection forms across the country. So we'll be processing all of these, and we ensure that we get them, we we'll get a fair process. Uh, the issue of the the constitution, I think you answered the question. The constitution is always two way. The constitution says you do the constituency for the elections. 
when there's need for you to do boundary delimitation. And we trigger, we made the pronouncement for us to do boundary delimitation, given the circumstances. A, it has the current one was done in 2017, expired in February. So, which made the lower limit of five years met. Two, there was a significant change in the population as a result of the midterm census. Three, we have submitted, based on the election observation recommendations, we have reduced the quota, population quota, from 25 to plus or minus 2020. That has gone through parliament. So whatever indication, we are bound to do boundary delimitation because if we use image that alone, it's going to change the population per district. If we have used the population quota, the deviation rate of 20 to 20 percent. So there was every reason for us to commence the boundary delimitation. We started the process, we had a committee set up, we have trained our staff, we have even done the allocation of seats using the locality and district population that was given to us. We had planned to start community engagement, stakeholders engagement, early part of August, and we had crisis of August 10. We could not do that. So the question for us at the time, do we proceed with the boundary delimitation or do we proceed with the voter registration? We are, we are far away in the voter registration on the 15th when the official census results was presented to president. So the question we ask, we had proposed to the president, as you rightly mentioned, do we do boundary delimitation to be able to meet the six month rule that says you cannot change the voter register six months to the elections? That is impracticable. We cannot achieve that. So the alternative is can we defer the elections? I don't think any one of us here wants to do that. So, as a result of the compromise, we advise president that we have to do the proportional representation, which already exists in the constitution for him to do. So that's the directive we have received. So it is not a question of violating the constitution. We have acted within the constitution. I agree with you, the timing, and there is a need for voter education, community engagement on the process. That's where we want everybody to come on board. This is how we are going. We have to accept it. But then we need everybody to come on board, just like how we came on board for the voter registration to be successful, for us to educate people so that we can do the proportional representation and have a successful, and I will be happy, I will be very happy for us to use this process. So at the end of the day, we will have, we will estimate that we will have a compromise in parliament where you have everybody represented in parliament. <laughs> In parliament, in local council, across the board. If you also review, it will also reduce eventually to also reduce the acrimonies that we have witnessed over the period in by elections. Because the system allows us to do replacements where the council is for. So, Madam, please come on board. Let's come on board. Uh, so I was going to ask her for the way he eloquently answered that question. But let me go back to the issue of the rejection. You know, I am the commissioner for the North, and at the moment I also and white oversight for the Northwest Kingdom. And I visited all the districts in the North and Northwest Kingdom during the, in both phases of the registration. From Palaba, Kukrenazdubu, Karine, Bombali, Kokoli, Potwoko, and Zambia. And uh, let me, this issue of uh, under age, at times it's being overplayed. I have to speak. Because in the two regions that uh, I monitor the discussion, 
these issues did not dominate the legislation process. People were compliant. They came to the, our centers, and uh, in cases where the registration officers were not satisfied, they asked them to go home and bring their documents. They came with their documents, and they were registered. And I visited centers at times. The centers were empty. There were, there were times when I found the staff sleeping because there was no body in the registration center, no applicants. Those of you who went to Falaba, Bombali, in Bakeri town itself, Bakeri town, in Patlopo town, in Kamakwe, in Nakuaka, in Kambia, I went to Okupu, Namoro, all these places. And you talk to the agents in the centers. And I tell you, in all the centers I visited, I probably visited more than 50 centers. You will find both SLPP and ABC agents. Um, of course, yes. Yeah, no, yes. And when you talk to them, they will tell you they are very happy with the process. No problem. They will not raise any forms. They will not raise complaints. Yes. And there are, there, are, there, are, there are one or two centers that I found new. I remember in Portugal, a school at Lube Road. I met a new observer and interacted. You know. And even when people were asking for additional days, why do people want additional days when you know that uh, already the centers were empty, people who wanted to register have been registered, and for every day that you have voter registration, believe me, it costs more than a billion euros. Just think of the money we pay to the staff. You know, 100,000 per day for the app, or the others is 90,000 for each one of them, and you, you pay, you pay. Because all these logistics, people swell and so on and so forth, it's an expensive process. One of the most expensive processes in the electoral process. So, I will say that uh, in the region I cover, in the north and west, these issues of uh, people being rejected did not come to the headlines. I promise to ask, I promise Mr. Patoma that he will ask the next question. I made a promise. I like to keep my promises. Thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate that, Mr. Chairman. Um, democracy is about participation. And as a right based organization, we are concerned about the participation of independent candidates in the proportional. Uh, Block system. So, um, can we get a confirmation here that uh, people who want to go um, solo without belonging to a political party, we may have the privilege, you know, to contest just like under the constituency base. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Now, we use the PR system in 1996. And in the 2002 elections, in both occasions, the system did not allow the participation of independent candidates. Now, however, this does not mean that uh, for the 2023 elections, we will not accommodate independent candidates. But as of now, I cannot give you a definite answer. But what I will say, it is a situation we are looking at in the is something that uh, we want to do if we can do it. We want to. Yes, sir. I am. I am honorable of Kabo. I am honorable of Kabo. I would have loved the chief commissioner to be present. Because my question is based on the statements he made. Of course, uh, it is clear that the current constituencies took effect in 2017 December. And from 2017 December, because that was when parliament was dissolved, from 2017 December till now, the constitution makes provision for the current constituencies to be valid 
for up to seven years. For up to seven years, the constitution the, the constitution makes that provision. And if the commissioner is saying the current constituencies are no longer relevant or they have been dissolved, I stand to ask myself the question, which constituency am I representing currently in the current parliament? Because I am representing constituency 077, it shows that my constituency is valid, it is recognized until after seven years. And quite apart from that, if you look at the amendment they are relying on, that is 37A, 38A, 3 is very clear that it is only political parties that will send in aspirants for members of parliament. Meaning, if you do not belong to a political party, your names will not be sent to, to, to ECSF. So if independent candidates are to be considered, it means we need another constitutional amendment of 38A. It means we need another constitutional amendment of 38A. And I was seeing a lot of people were applauding the commissioner when he made mention of the fact that the PI system is a good system. You know, I don't want to open a debate of the efficiencies of the PI system, but I just want to assure you that Sierra Leone has used the PI system on two different occasions and we decided to abandon it because of the deficiency. For example, I was in Poloko. In Poloko, we had eight seats in 22. 2002, we had eight seats. And members of parliament were not selected or elected as per constituency. The party sent list, regardless of where these members of parliament are selected from, it's the party's discretion. So we had a situation after the winning of the election, we had a situation where four members of parliament, we are coming from Poloko Central alone, four members of parliament, two from different political parties. And we in Kafubulo, Loko Masama, and the others of Envago, we are without any member of parliament. The member of parliament was leaving Poloko to come and check us in Kafubulo after one year, after two years, after three years. And let me tell you, let me tell you also, for those of you who don't know, when names are submitted, for example, in Poloko, we currently have 10 constituencies. If we send 10 names to, to ECSF, yeah, and people go to my constituency and say, Honorable Apukabo, we don't want you. We don't want you, and we are not going to vote for you in our area because we don't want you, and the party has chosen you. And people say, well, Ahmed said the party has chosen you, but we want you. We want you. And everybody voted because of the fact that Ahmed said, I am coming. When you have the opportunity, you can ask your own question. And the, 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 everybody says, Ahmed said, we are voting for you because you are a true son of our of the sweat and we love you. When they vote for Ahmed Sise, and they didn't vote for me, because my name was submitted first on the list, all the vote of moment Ahmed Sise is transferred to me. I am the first to go into parliament. That is the system we are now calling for. That is the system we are calling for. I just want my okay. um, Thank you, Honorable. What let me change this that first, the electoral commission by law is an independent commission. Law makes provision for that, and we try as best as possible to act independently. So the decision to review the boundaries was a decision by the Electoral Commission in accordance with the law. Because the law states that uh, you can review boundaries in a period not less than five years and not more than seven years. So the boundaries were enacted in February 2017. They reached the threshold of the five years, and it is the commission that decided that uh, this boundaries could be reviewed. So, honorable, we are elected based on those boundaries. So, it does not mean that uh, those boundaries will continue to be in place until the next election. The constituencies and laws will be in place until the next election. 
Now, what the commission is saying, based on our discussions, based on what the chairman has said, His Excellency the President has directed that based on all the issues raised, we will go into a distinct growth system. That's what we are saying. Guys, but the decision to rebuild the boundaries was a decision made by the Electoral Commission. It was the net, it was the ECSL that released a press statement saying in August that we will review the boundaries. That was our decision. It's an independent commission. We took that decision. And it is in line with the law because the law gave us the opportunity to do so within a period of five years. So on the limitations of the PR system, those issues are issues that I'm sure should be handled by the political parties. The parties should ensure that the, 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 the list submitted are represented to have representations of the various parts of the districts. Of course, uh, those are things that can be worked on within the parties. Right. So I, I did not say that uh, we are going to allow independent candidates. It was a, I was responding to a question, and I said it is something we are looking at. Because in other countries, they have PR system, and they do allow independent candidates to contest. So we are looking at it. Right? Yes. Okay, Mr. Dayami. Yes. Thank you, Chairman. Granted that we are still on level one, I hope. I'm trusting on the integrity of the Commission that the fine details of what you just told us will be given to us later. We want to recommend that you assign a specific day or date where you spend a whole lot of time discussing these beautiful fine details that people have started putting up. So my comment actually today is a commendation. The first one is to all of us as uh, women, headed by you, the commission, for having attained the position of deputy chair and chair or chair in an international body for electoral processes in the world. I think we should all be very proud <laughs> And, 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 and talking about nationality, I want to run down to the presence of the national flag in your hall and commend you again for beautiful work you've done, which gives me nationality today. The, the third commendation is also to you for having completed an arduous and tedious, tremendously difficult exercise by putting us together into what you call an electoral register. The final one. Is to all of us here. And in doing so, I want to quote late Ahmad Yankara, in whose name I'm running the foundation, when he said, What happened or may have happened to Sierra Leone from 1961 to date may or may not have been the responsibility of any of us in this hall. But what happens from today? Henceforth, remains the singular responsibility of each and everyone in this hall because we are now in the know of what we want, what we should want, what we should do to keep Sierra Leone in one piece and live in peaceful coexistence. With those few words, I hope we maintain level one until we reach. Thank you very much. I am sure we will maintain the good one. Because uh, the meeting we spent some time now and I like the atmosphere. I'm sure this is the spirit. You see, let me tell you political parties. Political parties are not enemies. It's a healthy competition. It, it should be a healthy competition. And the other thing I want to say, sometimes let us look at the opportunities that uh, some of these things will present. Let's not don't look at it. We will spend time here if we begin to analyze the electoral systems.
various types of electronic systems. No, no, no one of them is perfect. They all have their limitations. But let us look at the opportunities that uh, each system will present. And let's make good use of it. Yes, by the answer. Thank you. 
and have them in language. We input the details. They are not in the system. They come forward for confirmation. So why are you coming? Where, where did you get this I can stop? And they are actually qualified to vote. How did you get this? Another thing is the NTR is sleep. But well, that's why I want to come in. That's the reason why some people were in fact to NTR. They came in with fake NTR sleep. So that's the reason why they were, I have one in my phone. We inputted the, the data, the, the serial number. It happened at Angola. I was right there when she walked in. So I took a snapshot of the sleep. I have it in my phone. I can share it with you. She came in with the sleep. They inputted the information on the sleep. Three people came up, three different people. So we ran through, you know, we did all the tests. We couldn't trace her records. So we asked her to go to NCIA, get a proper document. It's not like we were sending them to go do the registration with NCIA. The ones who were sent to NCIA were the ones who came in with the NCIA sleep that had some issues. No, well, let me like finish. So that's the, that's the point, and the reason why some people were not given, I must say, they were not given the rejection form. As soon as they were notified that the birth certificate is fake, and the police were supposed to take care of them, because you actually falsify a national document, it has nothing to do with the commission. We also had to take passport, passports. Yes, after the second phase. Some people even moved from, they registered the first phase, the second phase, some of them were arrested, they were taken to the hospital police station. After registering the first phase, they thought they were not going to be identified in the second phase. So they moved to another center in the same world, wanting to be registered. So the registration staff immediately identified them as people who already gone through the process. And they were like, yes, I've gone through the process. But somebody told me to come back. We even um, arrested it actually slipped away. A party agent who was in one of our centers, he was the one issuing out the fake birth certificate. So as soon as we arrested the three boys, they were taken to the police station and they said, no, the, the party agent in the center gave us the birth certificate. That was the end of it. But the conclusion of I wouldn't, I, I would not say that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't delve into that. Um, the conclusion of this thing is the first is we have to first of all um we get set um to see this process as one that is very serious we have to be serious about it and at the same on the same note treat it as one that will it will form the foundation of whatever structure we intend to be so if the structure, the foundation is faulty the structure will definitely collapse. So that is the, it's collective responsibility. It's not about being appointing. And like the commissioner rightly said, the party agents in the centers, in all the centers I visited, in the western urban, western urban, who were, they were like sitting in the centers, they were not moving. They were sitting in the centers, taking notes of everything that was happening in the center. They were satisfied with, with the process. They had no issues. So as far as I know, I am okay and I feel the process is credible. And I must end on this note that the Western region actually registered the highest number. Highest number of registered. The, the, the number of registrants of the Western area cannot even be compared to the other area, the second highest. So that's it. So we created a level playing paper. At the end of the day, the process has to be credible. For those who were issued the rejection form, rejection form, but the ones who actually show the documents is rejected, the issues will be considered as we move on to the next week. Thank you. Since we have a time of the Commissioner for the West, maybe the Commissioner for the East will also say a few things about the region. Hello, everyone. It's good to speak at this podium on a day like this, we have a full house. I'm happy to see all of you here, and I hope and pray we to maintain this kind of attention to the process. The, the, this issue of uh, first-time voters, many of them 
were really in my region, like in Blama, there was this boy of even far less than 15 that went to register. I said, where is the document that you came with? In fact, the chief at the center said, no, the boy, he did not recommend it. But how come you are trying to register the phone? So I had to stop that. These are the kinds of people that go, oh, they're asking for this, asking for that. You can't even give it. I mean, at, at their age, really, why should they not have birth certificates? Young kids of. Come on. They don't have birth certificates. We really have to step up as your union to be proud. In other countries, a baby is born today, that baby has ensured the social security number that will follow him or her right through. Let's start this. NCLA was not go wasting. All right? You have a baby to the register. There was a girl also in Kenneman Brown. She tried to do the same thing. All she had was a letter written by her daddy. Her daddy was not even there. My papa gave me this. I said, how old are you? And she was funny. Come on. How long do we have to be cheating to have responsible positions? We say we want to be leaders of a country we should be proud of. And people think they can aid and abate those kinds of activities that will sit here as a commission to listen to them would not accept. I want every Sierra Leonean, all of us, it starts with us, to start to be doing incredible things. Let's teach the children the right things to do. Don't send your kid to go and register at a far lower age. How is he going to cope with going to college? They'll be retiring before you. You know, because all of this thing. If, if you go and register, you are 14, and you say you are 18, know that from that point, you are losing four years of your working age yeah. in the future. So we are forget about these party differences and let's work as a team. A good thing comes. It doesn't matter which party it comes from. We have to embrace the good things. And we all have to flush out the rotten things to make Sierra Leone a better place. That's my day. I am moving towards the end of this meeting. I am not a lawyer, but we are meeting it. We have been so we must take a go. This is the end of the meeting. I believe there is a spirit behind us. The spirit is sure. In small communities, in small communities, like the village where I come from, Pepper Island, we know each other. Everybody in Pepper knows everybody. So it is if and, uh, some of these villages don't have health facilities, there are no bank certificates. So I'm sure the spirit of the law is for those communities. Where there are no health centers, where everybody knows each other, somebody comes, the chief can say, hey, yes, you know, you, you. we can confirm that it is one of us, we can confirm that it's not 18 years. So the next thing we should be doing here is to encourage people in these big cities to get certificates, bank certificates, and other documents. Bank certificate is not just for elections, it's not just for elections, it is an important document for everybody to get. So I think at this yes. now now um, 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 let us let us I think let us be patient and allow three one will be from the yeah. upper chairman yes. Yes. and then one from uh, yes. and then the lady and then the lady yes. Tony I don't know if I have time for you no 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 Tony please Tony please Tony please Tony please Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Please. All right, when the Apache Chairman speaks, so what is it? So I want to take the issue. When the Apache Chairman speaks, so what is it? Mr. Chairman, I definitely have my deputy Apache Chairman here. Dr. Hadi. So I think uh, we are together, so I'm highly protected. Uh, in the very first place, on behalf of the All Boys Staff Party Association, we want to say, we want to tell thanks to the All Boys Staff Party Association, PPRS, because we are part of the process. 
this supposed to us upper, up one, up here. We are part of the process. We are caught across, across, across the entire program to monitor the restriction exercise. You can attest. Our final report is with the PPRC. We submitted our final report. Our findings was the special exercise. They can present it to the ECSM. We are part of the process. You know, I normally say these things. We must be honest to ourselves. When somebody speaks truth or something that is good, people point finger, finger, fingers at them. That they are they've taken a position. No matter what you say, see, I know it belongs to all of us. The Bible says, if somebody is doing good, praise him. Sing Hosanna for him. Of course, yes. You know, ECSF, ECSF, or no matter whatever things you do, some people will not appreciate. Even after election, some people will not appreciate. Same thing applies with Satan. <laughs> Satan was with, with God, but because Satan thinks that he is powerful, so he decided to go and leave his own kingdom. That is how some people are in this country. They are thinking that they are powerful, they want to go and leave their own kingdom. They will not accept it. No way. No way. Secondly, towards the PR system. Towards the PR system. We've been, for us as an association, we've been pushing towards the PR system. Since the construction review committee, we are, I, I was part of the process. Since the CIC process, some people just do. Yesterday. Yesterday. They were not part of that process. So, when you read that the field political arena for the first time, you need to patient, observe, and stop. Join the line, or else you are out. This is an evidential document that sees the starting of the PI system. These are position paper that will be pushing us. Very long time. As the all political parties association is supporting the PI system. And I want to make it very clear today. That we want to say thanks to His Excellency the President for giving us the PI system. And I want to make it very clear that I'm an honorable awaiting from the PI So for the first case, I would like to present our position that today APA we have succeeded with the PR system. Very thanks to His Excellency President Yosana Because definitely come 2023, we are going to get a mixed parliament of different political parties, which is very, very good for the arrest like this. Uh, I would like to start audience please. I would like, I would like to start by thanking uh, the commissioner. I would like to start by thanking the commissioner for voting our patriotic sentiment. That way, I would also like to uh, as well for reminding us of our civic duty. Uh, I, the commissioner West, uh, I also want to thank you. I wish you could go further and assure us that the registration for Western area far surpasses the previous registration. Thank you very much. That was reassuring, and it's in tandem with our records as well. Now, I'm just worried about the assertions of the data manager, Mr. Suare. He said, and he can correct me if I'm wrong, that out of 260,537 data that have been processed based on the NACRA, about 85,000 are clear and the rest are incomplete. And part of the conflicts 
does not preclude multiple biometric or fingerprint registration. I find that totally disconcerting because I think it is scientifically impossible to have two fingerprints at the same time. He can correct me if I'm wrong. So we're worried. Now, does that mean that when that is been established and people that are suspected of multiple registration are deregistered and upon exhibition is now realized that they made a mistake? Can those people be registered? If for any reason you deregister individuals based on what you perceive as multiple registration, and when you go to exhibition, because we shall monitor the exhibition as usual in, in all uh, and robustly. And then you realize that, oops, we made a mistake. This actually individual exists. He has legitimate documentation and put a uh, registration slip. Can those people be registered stated into the register? That's the question. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I would like to respond to the last part of the question. Um, that in the event uh, somebody is being deregistered, uh, removed from the person's register, and during exhibition, they find out that a mistake and then the person is registered. Now, we should realize, we should understand the processes uh, of exhibition. Exhibition basically uh, is to undertake corrections objections and inclusions and that is one aspect of trying that's one aspect of the process that just be mentioned about. so during exhibition in the event somebody presents his or her voter slip and uh, we realize that the person is not on the voter's register the person can claim for inclusion as long as we can assert that indeed that person re registered in that sense because we are also going to verify the registration of all those who, who, who present themselves. I will not just rely upon the slips they provide. Because of course, we should be mindful of the fact that um, with, uh, with what happened in the voter registration process, where we saw a deliberate attempt to throw the system, we are also conscious if you present your voter slip during exhibition and your name is not on the voter's register, we will have to ascertain the authenticity of that slip by making reference to our own copies in the Form 1 booklet as well as the journals. Because as you know, when you register, we enter your details in the journals, be it new applicant journal or a community journal. So we will first of all ascertain your details in those documents. And once they are there, then they are claiming for inclusion. We definitely will look into and to the process. Yes. Okay, um, um, please, please. Now, I want to give one day speech to three people. No, I know, I know. One is the our lady, my friend from NCD, of course, to the Songa. Because I want to hear from the other parties and NGC. That's what. No, you can talk. I can say what you talk. So, so, the lady from NGC, from the Songa, and my brother from NGC. I want to thank the ECSL on behalf of NCD for the update on the voter registration process. Commissioner, you mentioned about encouraging all to have us. To have part certificate. Let me um, share this. I was at Collette Town, um, Kongotom, and Kube. Um, most of the youth um, didn't have any um, identification documents, neither birth certificate. So I decided to ask them. They informed me that um, their, their documents were destroyed by fire incidents and flooding. However, I encouraged them to go for one. Also, I was at Oki Beach um, with a boss on the 7th of October. Most of the youth um, didn't have any documents, so um, they told me that they um, took their um, imam there, but the imam went there without any um, identification to show that he was an imam. So obviously they didn't um, 
allow them to organize them. Thank you. So you see, you see, even if even it's a small village, everyone knows the imam. Tommy. Okay, yes, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Tell us again, National Deputy Organized Society, the NGC Party. And I uh, firstly want to thank ECSM for an impressive and uh, performance they have showed throughout this tremendous process. I believe we, the NGC Party, if it were the PR system that was used in 2018, we would have had 20 or more seats in parliament. But for the sake of clarity, I would want uh, the ECSL to just add more spices on the issue of uh, adjudication and that of consultation, right? Before we leave this hall. And uh, on the issue of legality and that of constitutionality, our party, as we have been doing, will come up with our own concerns, challenges, and probably recommendations. So I thank you once again. I am sorry to have us to Thank you very much. Tony, Tony. That's the guy. One minute, one minute. Okay, okay, okay. 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 Okay, about the fear of hope. Whatever we are doing today, let us remember there is a supreme maker. Generally and sincerely for the good of this nation. So be it. But no matter how we look at things, I will only encourage every political party to return to the parties and begin to sensitize our whole meetings and talk to them about the realities of life on the ground. So that we can have a peaceful cohesive nation and a free and a fair and credible election. Thank you and God bless us all. I think what's so, um, I will ask the of external relations to explain the modern works for the accreditation and the adjudication process. And so for the world, there's more information on the accreditation process. Uh, uh, basically, when we say adjudication or the adjudication, it will answer some of the concerns and questions that have come up here, especially the gentleman from APC, with regards mentioning what the director of data management was talking about, starting data in conflict. All of the registration centers were stand alone units. It is possible, but it was possible. Somebody registered in one ward and went again in another ward and went again in another ward. So the system has picked all of these ones. What is good about the, the, the adjudication process is to just leave one and do away with the others. But the commission cannot do that alone. That is why the commission is moving another step forward to the process at the National Data Center. So all of these concerns will be addressed there. On that note, the external regulations office is going to open as per the directives of the commission. Starting now, we we'll work tomorrow, Saturday. Office is going to open. We are not going to accredit individuals, but institutions. Feel free to send in your list because the, the, the adjudication process might take more than a week depending on the number of cases. But it is one individual per party or by institution per day. It is possible somebody may come the one, the two. That person may not have the time. We would encourage you to send five names. But on a daily basis, it is one individual because we may not have the time. Tomorrow from um, 10 in the morning, now, what we are saying, 
by day or whatever time, at a given time. At a, even if you are there till 1 p.m., you, you can leave all the possibilities inside, inside. inside. That's what we're saying. So, in other words, we can encourage an organization to send five names of accreditation, but only one. If one person has gone in, that institution is not going to have a second person for that session, as the case may be. Tomorrow, the office is going to open, and the external regulations after tomorrow will go to Berlinti. So, we may not have the opportunity. Let's do our accreditations. All of the organizations here, political parties, development uh, institutions, our stakeholders, we are all here represented. You can start the accreditation process now. We'll open the office tomorrow. After tomorrow, then you'll have yourself to live. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think um, the time 10 to 5. So this literally brings us to the end of this meeting. All I will say that, uh, is that uh, let us see ourselves. When you, the political parties, see yourselves as uh, competing colleagues and not enemies. Thank <laughs> you.